el último bloque, amigos de Pócares por Radio, este día jueves lo anunciábamos ¿eh? en el día de ayer, creo que fue, o el día martes, que íbamos a estar reviviendo todo lo que ha pasado, por lo menos en la primera y segunda parte de la visita de Farajaca aquí a nuestros estudios. Así que hemos hecho un compilado de todo lo que hemos disfrutado durante esta semana. Como decíamos, la entrevista realizada por el señor eh, Federico Estrada. Así que vamos a disfrutar de la visita de Farajaca, nada más y nada menos que aquí, a Pócares por Radio. Y con esto ya nos despedimos de este día jueves. Okay, welcome to Poker Sports for us. Thank you, um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, what's bring you to Argentina? You know, I I'm just kind of a homeless wanderer. My friends call me a nomad, so I don't live anywhere. I go to poker tournaments, and in between poker tournaments, I just wander. So I'll go to new countries that I've always wanted to visit, or maybe I meet some friends on tour, and they'll invite me to their homes. So uh, I actually have some friends from uh, Chicago who own an apartment here, and they've always told me that Buenos Aires is an amazing city. So uh, I just decided to, you know, come live here for two weeks. So uh, you know, I work for my computer, I play online poker, and I also do some business. So I just need an apartment and a computer, and I'm living here for two weeks. So your friends recommended you to come here. Yes, I, I love big cities. I love walking cities, and uh, I lived in Chicago, and this city really reminds me of that because I can walk everywhere, you know, the nice high-rise buildings, and, uh, you know, there's just a lot of culture, nice restaurants and things going on, so I, I like being able to come downstairs and just have so much liveliness on the streets. You're going to keep in Buenos Aires or you're going to travel to some place? I'm traveling in South America for a couple months, so I just did uh, Brazil for uh, three weeks. Okay. I went to a few different cities and... Um, Now I'm a little sick of being on a plane every five days, so I want to sit in one place for two weeks and just live and, you know, cook and exercise and be healthy. So I'm kind of taking a break here in Buenos Aires. And, uh, you know, I actually, I've been enjoying it so much that I've added this city to my list of places I would possibly live one day. Yeah. So I, I like it that much, and I mean that, yeah. And then you are going to return to Chicago, or? You know, I don't have anywhere to return to because I literally, I don't have a home. So, um, That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, we just finished the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas. So there was kind of a long break before the next tournament. So uh, I just decided, hey, I've, I've never been to South America. I never always wanted to. And I have an opportunity. You know, my friend offered me to stay in his apartment. So, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of wandering around South America. And the next tournament I have is in Florida in a few weeks. Um, there's also some big online tournaments coming up, like uh, WCOOP on PokerStars and these things. So I cannot play from the United States, so I need to be somewhere outside. So that's also another reason why I'm on the road. Uh, where do you play more time? In where, which city? Um, I've played in Canada a lot, okay. but uh, this time I'm going to uh, Mexico City. Uh, I'm going to stay there for two months and uh, play for an entire month there during the PokerStars WCOOP. So, uh, so kind of different places all the time. Uh, I used to play a lot in Europe, but uh, I, I cannot play online poker in Europe anymore. The time schedule is so bad. Yeah. I, um, I start playing at 5 p.m. Yeah, and yeah. I finish at 5 in the morning and the sun is coming up and I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, here the schedule is good actually. Here in Canada and Mexico is very good. You tell us you're from nowhere, but you have a place where you get your things you have a TV uh. yeah well no I don't I actually I have not had a TV in eight years so yeah. many people ask me oh do you know this TV show and this actor and this movie and I'm I'm so clueless to pop culture um, so I have um, I, I grew up in California yeah. I went to university in uh, near Chicago and I also lived there but uh, for last four out of the last six years I've been traveling without a home so uh, In California, I have a, a suitcase with some clothes. Okay. In Chicago, I have some boxes with clothes. In my friend's home in Poland, in my friend's home in New York, I have clothes. So when I visit these friends or my family, then I switch my luggage. But uh, I literally just have a backpack and a suit bag with everything in it. That's, that's it. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a Two check-in bags. Check-in bags. Okay. No, sorry, no check-in bags. No check Two bag. carry-on bags. Okay. Yeah. And Which is the, the worst place you've been? The worst place I've yeah. been? Ah, that's a hard question. You, normally people ask me the best place I've yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. You want to know the worst place. Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I've been to some poker tournaments. I, I, I can't think of a name right now, but when I think of one, I'll tell you. But, you okay. know, sometimes uh, 
You know, sometimes in the United States there have been some poker tournaments where they don't have it in the main city. They have it in a small city okay. like, yeah. like in uh, Hammond, Indiana I play or in Gary, Indiana where there's nothing to nothing do in to the do city, you know. Uh, but in Chicago it's very nice but it's an hour drive away. So I don't like playing tournaments in these little cities with nothing to do and you're just stuck in the casino. You know, I like when I go to uh, uh, Aussie Millions in Melbourne, like I love this because I have a whole city and I could do things and feel like a normal person, not just a degenerate <laughs> in a casino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're beginning in uh, Illinois, you studied economics there. See, That's economics okay. and business, yes. Okay, and at that time you go to Bellagio to play some cash games? Yeah, That's yeah. true? Yes, and yes. Tell, out, uh, tell us about that time. So um, I'm, I'm in college, I'm playing, uh, you know, poker in the dorms and uh, on the, the internet. And, you know, I have uh, my partner, uh, his name is Ben LeFew. So he was kind of my rounding partner. Like in rounders, you know, you have uh, Worm, like he was kind of my buddy. Yeah. Um, you have like 20 there, sorry? 20 years. Sorry? You are 20 years, 19, 18? Yeah, well, I started, I started university 18, but I was okay. there until 22. 22. So, um, so yeah, uh, I'm at college, and uh, I, I'd go to my friend, and I'd say, hey, you know, we've always talked about going to Vegas, like, uh, let's go. He says, yeah, you know, one day we go. I say, no, right now, let's go, <laughs> and it's 3 a.m., and uh, I say, you know, we don't have any class tomorrow, no homework, everything is finished. I look up the flights. And uh, I convinced him last minute to go. So at 3 a.m. we booked the flight, and uh, in four hours we leave, and we went to, uh, we flew to Vegas. We've never been there. Stayed at the Bellagio, played cash games, and uh, you know we we played 1020 no limit, and he played 8160 limit, and uh, we both made maybe seven eight thousand US, and you know we're college students, and yeah. this is a lot of money for us, so we're feeling on top of the world. We fly back to school, we tell all our friends, we celebrate, and then we go back the next week and do it again. Yeah. So, On those years, you, you get broke one time? Yeah, so, um, so I made about uh, $180,000 playing uh, online poker and yeah. some trips to Vegas. Yeah. And uh, in just about uh, one week, I made $180,000 on, uh, online. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know bankroll management, no one's ever taught me um, you know any of these rules yeah. so I'm feeling on top of the world I think that oh every week I'm gonna make this much money yeah. so I'm playing way out of my bank goal, stakes too big and within the next year I lost everything and uh, this was a very tough period for me you know very depressing like it's very hard I kept trying to uh, play big stakes to make it back and uh, it took me about a whole year of just constantly trying to make it and losing it again and uh, I'm actually very happy I went through this period because it taught me the most valuable lessons about money management. And, um, you know, I, I think about it and say, hey, I'm happy this happened for 180000 Then I win a tournament for a million dollars or start a business and lose that kind of money, you know? So um, it taught me some very valuable lessons and I'm very happy I went through it. It made me a very stronger person and taught me a lot about myself. But keep us when you broke. Uh, where did you get the bank to go on playing? To, to, to play again. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, there was, I had many friends and peers and people who knew that I was a very successful poker player. So okay. uh, they had a lot of faith in my, uh, my talent as a poker player. Yeah. So they knew that I had the capability to, you know, play and beat these games. It was just a matter of having the uh, maturity to manage my brand growth financially well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I had some friends who had faith in me and I'm very fortunate for that. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, because of them, they were, I was able to get staked and uh, build my bank roll back up. And um, which level of cash would, did you play at, at that moment? 1020, but... Well, 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 what's funny is um, when I was 19 and 20 playing yeah. poker, I played much higher stakes than I do now because uh, I was playing uh, 100, 200, no limit. No. And at this time, that, that is the biggest game that ever exists yeah. online. There's nothing bigger at this For time. Sure, yeah. So uh, even at one point, I had uh, $40,000 to my name and I'm putting in 20,000 into one game, <laughs> half of my bankroll. Um, so I was kind of this fearless young kid that um, had talent, but you know, did again, didn't know bankroll management. But I'm, again, I'm very happy that I experienced this because um, 
I was playing against the best players in the world, and I didn't know who they were, you know, because I, I didn't ever watch poker on TV, I didn't know any online forum, so I'm competing against the best in the world, and I have no fear. And now, I think because of this, you know, when I'm playing in a big tournament for millions of dollars, and I can bluff all in, all my chips, and it doesn't bother me at all. I don't get emotional, I don't get scared. It's because I've been through the worst, you know, I've made the money, I've gone broke, and I'm back, and everything's okay. So it kind of taught me that, you know, no matter what, you're going to be fine. And which of the, play of the players at th those tables are now mega pro? Like when you play high stakes. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember I was playing against uh, Ram Vaswani, uh, Prolad Friedman, um, just to name a couple. And again, I, did, I had no idea who these who people were. They were just some screen name, you know? That's yeah. helped you. Sorry? That's helped you in the in the decisions in the table, on the table? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's just because I'm playing against them and they're such good competition, but I did not know who they were. So because of that, I had no fear to play against them. And that taught me that uh, today, you know, many people sit against a pro and they're very scared and intimidating. And a, a big part of being successful is being confident. And because I did not know who these people were, I was very confident. Maybe if you know who they are, you're scared and you're not as confident. Yeah, sure, so sure. this kind of taught me that don't let the psychology and confidence scare you. Instead, you can have the confidence and you know that will help you play better. If, if you respect the bankroll, it's, it's very difficult to get in high stake. So mm -hmm. do you recommend to get a shot in some place of the of, in some moment yeah you know that's actually one of the most difficult things because um, I have there's many there's two types of poker players one they have very bad bankroll management but yeah. they're fearless and the other type is too conservative so the two conservative they never make it to the high stakes they don't experience so I think I'm very lucky that uh, I was able to have this experience so I think it is good to take shots but um, it's calculated risks So, you know, maybe if you have um, a bankroll to play, you know, 10, 20, no limit, maybe take a percentage of that and say, hey, I'm going to be very risky with the top 20% of my bankroll and take a shot. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm going to go back to my rules. But, you know, take a small percentage of it that you can afford to lose. And in your head before, say, if this is gone, I'm okay with it. You know, this money is gone now. So that way, when you lose it, you don't feel bad, you know? Uh, for sure. Uh, let's go to the first session that you uh, get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What do you do with, with, those, with that money? Because you yeah. don't... Uh... Yeah, um, I remember there was this time uh, when me and my, uh, my partner, Ben Lefeu, we made so much money in poker and uh, You know, when we were young, both of our parents for, you know, kind of strict, they taught us good values, like don't waste money, don't buy stupid toys that you don't need. <laughs> and you know, when you're a kid, you want everything, you know, games, this and that. Yeah. So uh, one day we're walking on the street in Vegas and uh, we see uh, some guy selling a flying helicopter. We said, okay, we buy this and we fly helicopters. And then we <laughs> see someone else walkie talkies and we just thought it was funny to buy all the toys and things we wanted when we were kids that we couldn't have. Um, Also, uh, you know, in college, I'm sitting in a small dorm room and uh, we, we bought a TV and a poker table for the room and uh, nice furniture and no, no, no student had, you know, these things and we, uh, we rented out the bar and threw an entire party. So we're kind of just like excited that uh, we can live this lifestyle and do all these things that normally young kids are not al allowed to do because they don't have the money to, to spend like that. <laughs> 